Cops, right? Black shirt. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, they're here on me right now. Got to definitely have to get shot again at the very least. All right, I'm going to see if they'll cooperate. I'll get back to you in a second. How are you guys doing today? Huh? Y'all good? Yeah. Y'all just shopping around and stuff? Why does that matter? Something happened a little bit ago, and y'all just did the description. We don't fit in no description. They said they don't fit the description. What is the description? I'm black too. We just came out of right there. We got some water. We know what y'all did. They're not cooperating. I'm gonna have to see if they'll uh, let me scan. Not cooperating. Not what? Please spread your arms. No, no, no. Spread your arms. No, no, no. They're not cooperating. We have to send back up. I don't know. Bro. Oh, what is wrong with you? She wilding out. Yeah, send back up. Send back up. Come quick. Come quick. All right, so this is taken from a prank channel. So although the security guard is fake, this lady's reaction is real. Now, first things first, these are the same women that complain about the protection while violating the rights of who proposed himself to be a working blue collar man. But where on God Green's earth is this the type of reaction or behavior that you should elicit? Imagine if the roles were reversed. Imagine if it was guys being pranked and the initial thought is to slap the woman's security guard. But let's be honest, this young savage right here felt comfortable because they outnumbered him, A. B, he's smaller than her. And C, because of female privilege. Your inability to keep your hands to yourself demonstrates the lack of authority from which you emanate from. Keep your damn hands to yourself. Because at the end of the day, you can take a booger out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the booger. It's sick and twisted that I have to work just to survive, just to live my life for basic ass necessities. Like, I don't want to work until the day I die just to eat shit and sleep. Basic human necessities, it shouldn't be controversial. Fucking free housing, free healthcare shouldn't be a goddamn pipe dream. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you should be doing this or that. No. Like, what if I don't want to be rich? What if I want to achieve shit? You see what happens when you create generation after generation of non-masculine men? And what's crazy to me is that this young brother's vote matters just as much as mine. There was whole cemeteries of men that have died in war for us that just rolled in their grave off of hearing this weird ass entitlement shit as what this young brother just said. Imagine the amount of entitlement to complain about wanting more free shit when you live in the most affluent, most abundant society that has ever existed. With the least amount of infant mortality, the least amount of poverty, the least amount of famine, with the least amount of crime, with the least amount of hunger, the most amount of surplus, but still you complain? To all of the masculine men watching this right now, this is your competition. Just imagine 700 days of just grinding and working as hard as what you can to become the most valuable that you can. It's easy to beat dudes like this. They don't wanna work hard. They're lazy as hell, but this is the entitlement culture. Consistent ambition, consistent goals, and consistent discipline will put you ahead of the pack. But this is exactly what it looks like when a man loses all sense of masculinity. To all 28.3 women that watch this channel right here, is this what y'all are really attracted to? Do y'all not now understand the impact of feminizing young boys today? Think about all of the hardworking blue collar men that make our country run. If you lose out on them, if they were to just disappear the whole world would dive into calamity and who would be left y'all and them a thousand years ago a man with this type of ideology would have been at the least kicked out of the tribe and at the most would probably have died of starvation okay he could have protect you from a wet blanket the other thing that men have and i don't understand why women don't have it this seems backwards to me is what? this incredible amount of self-esteem and self-confidence built on absolutely nothing. We got as an agent here. As we are, every guy also thinks everyone wants him all the time. What? A guy will pee in his backyard, walk out the front door, and think, she wants me. No. No, that's, that's not true, actually. 
And yet women are the most magical, beautiful creatures on this planet. Pander. Just gliding around the globe. Got it. Like cotton candy goddesses. I see what's going on here. Just filled with life and love and beauty and self-doubt. Do I look fat? Do I look old? I hate my hair. I hate my eyes. I hate my ass. And meanwhile, you're walking around with a pet orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> Pet orangutan, huh? Y'all over here canceling red pillars, but y'all giving comedy shows to man haters. Got it. Misandry has become so normalized in society today that even men are utilizing their talents to monetize it. If it wasn't for platforms like this, then we wouldn't have the burning platform of the push necessary to point a finger at it and say, is this right? Or is this wrong? Now, while I support comedians and their freedom of expression, comedians are usually the test bed for pushing different ideas in society, which inevitably get legs to move on. Shout out to Patrice O'Neill, but the brother was so far ahead of his time in calling out so many of the bullshits <laughs> that men experience. And now there's a whole movement and a whole wave and dudes providing data to support the things that he was saying. But what's so crazy about that is that he was demonized for his thoughts at that particular time, which to me goes to show that if you are going to go up against the grain, you're gonna face a great amount of opposition as opposed to hanging on to the coattails of the old guard pushing the same old narrative, which is gonna make you a lot more lucrative options going into the future. That's why I tell you guys ad nauseum to support the content creators that support you. This is just a reminder for men that scientists have now discovered a way for women to impregnate themselves using their own bone marrow. And the only what? child that can result from those pregnancies are female. So we no longer have any need for you genetically or physically. So, you know, tread lightly. Um, that is not true. That's what I figured. At all. That's not even a little true. It's false. No way. Not this time. So put down the mascara, honey, and use your brain for a minute Ooh. if you have one. You actually think that <laughs> women can impregnate themselves? It doesn't even sound like And that sense. isn't a big deal to you? Besides, if you don't need no man, as you suggest, then I sure hope you don't expect men to pay for your meals when you go out on a date. I hope when that check comes, you're reaching for it every single time. But as we know, classic thing, we've, I, I have never heard of a feminist who remains a feminist when the check hits the table. <laughs> doesn't, that doesn't work, does it? You, ma'am, are an unresearched idiot, just a bumbling buffoon. Pray for God that your house never catches on fire, because guess what? You'll want a team of masculine men to come and put out the blaze. Also, you should pray for God that in your female utopia that you won't need men to build shit either, right? Like, who's going to put up the power lines? Who's going to be the trash men? Who's going to be the ice road truckers? Who's going to be these people? You're gonna, you're gonna employ women to do all of that shit? Who's gonna build the buildings? We have created so much of a cushy, plush toy society that these women can say these things completely foregoing the need and the purpose of men that have created the society that they rest their delusional heads at. But this is exactly what it looks like when you drip that copium directly into your veins. A Tucson airman spends weeks testing his coffee maker for chemicals and recording his wife pouring something into it. Tonight's the night I caught her. But he did not have enough evidence until he set up three cameras, one in the laundry room where the bleach was kept, one from the laundry room to the coffee maker, and one over the coffee maker. Wow. Two different sequences show her pouring from a bleach container into a cup, walking the cup from the laundry room to the coffee maker, and then pouring the contents of the cup into the coffee maker. Tucson police then arrested Melody Feliciano Johnson. I keep telling y'all to get some cameras in y'all crib. Imagine housing a stay-at-home wife, and meanwhile, you're housing an insurgent. And if it wasn't for the camera, this diabolical insurgent would have gotten away with it. So a lovely young lady and her boyfriend go to a rap concert. The young woman gets up on stage and begins to twerk, cheeked out, facing the crowd. Now, I can't show that due to YouTube guidelines, but let's pick up the video from right here. Oh. 
she got abducted. Here goes the boyfriend. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, the look back is nasty work. Ma'am, oh, you just created a dog. <laughs> you just created Thanos incarnate. Oh. I feel your pain, bro. There she go, there she go. Look at her, look at her. What should I do now for you? Oh. <laughs> if anybody knows the young man, let him know that I know that it hurts now, my G. But what those guys did up on that stage was actually doing you a favor. These hoes ain't never loyal, my G. And although you were having a lot of fun with her, I'm sure that the bedroom viscous inners activity was top notch. What you failed to overlook is that you was dating a hoe. So essentially the rappers just ripped the band-aid off of something that would have inevitably come to light later on. And trust me when I say, when you get back in contact with her later, she's gonna be like, oh, I just didn't know what to do. They just pulled me out of the darkness. And there I was up on stage. I am a victim. Support me in my thought like ways. But don't you dare. You must understand if she was that easy to abduct in the first place, that she was never yours to begin with. She belongs to the streets. As someone who did OnlyFans for two years, freshly 18, and did make their own money off of it, um, I'm very sick to see people glamorizing OnlyFans like this all the time on TikTok. One, you guys are not going to be making that much money. For example, 100K a month posting bikini pictures and seductive pictures and lingerie. You are going to have to pop things open that you do not want to show, do the most. You know what I mean. You also will not make that much money unless you are using your existing following or a existing following to promote your OnlyFans. For example, the only reason I made a lot of money on OnlyFans was because it was my OnlyFans and people wanted to see my body. It also destroys your public and job reputation. It destroys your job reputation because you fill out a tax form so all jobs see it. And your public reputation, everybody, you're a sex worker. Step one, build an online presence, preferably Instagram, because a thought don't need to say nothing on Instagram to gain an online presence. Because we all know that talking in IG models don't go together like salt and slugs. Step two, advertise to your existing audience that you're about to put your monkey meat online. Step three, Put your monkey meat online. Step four, profit. Oh, but wait, your public reputation is in the shitter. Every job in the future will know what you did. And there's a 99.5% chance that your family will find out that your monkey meat is now online. It's so ironic that the men in these spaces get so much flack or they're too hard on women. But when these are your long-term results, one must ask, why is the anger not directed at yourself? But just to show you how crazy and how clown world the world is today and how impressionable these women are is that there's another sect of women who proclaim to be virgins while also having been promiscuous. Family, so I meet a lot of women and some of them are embarrassed because they're edging on into their 30s or even later than that and they are still a virgin. For myself, I am actually still a virgin. I So I still actually am a virgin, even though I am heading into my 30s soon. So, Prophet Timothy, how does it feel dating someone who has actually never engaged in the act of intercourse? Prophet Timothy, please, um, if you have cuts on your face, do not wear giant band-aids on your face. Just, just let the cut be exposed. What are you doing, Prophet Timothy? What's going on here? I could tell by his usage of band-aids alone that he is an odd way of thinking about the world and will accept a young woman touting her promiscuity while also touting her virginity. <laughs> like just, the two just make sense. You know what I'm saying? It's a blessing. Um, it's a blessing. I can honestly say that. Uh, it's a blessing. God has that. 
But my G being first means nothing if she's got a hundred of eggplants stuffed into her mouth previously. That's not an honor. Why on earth would you be honored by that? Legitimately, when I was in college, it's a quick short story. When I was in college, I met a young lady that was telling me she was a virgin as well, but she's tried through the poop shoot. So I'm like, uh, so <laughs> what? So you're not a, now technically, now if you like look it up, like medically, yes. Technically, you are a virgin if you not had vaginal penetration, technically. And I will admit, I like to go by technical terms up on his channel. However, if you out here getting blasted in the poop shoot from Chad, goddamn, I'm not gonna make a goddamn YouTube video about you talking about how honored that I am. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Yo, just the way that the young gentleman with the Nelly bandage is looking at the young woman with the beavis smile right now is just, pfft. The most amount of love that I think that you can see between two people. So listen, at the end of the day, if you happy, my G, you happy. And I'm not here to poop on that love, but I am here to say is that ladies, all 29.3 women that watch this channel, just because you're a rub and tugger doesn't mean that we don't take that into account as well. So anyway, I brought you guys through a roller coaster ride throughout this video, but what was the point of me going through all of this? I simply wanted to demonstrate to you guys that with all the marketing and the influence that hits modern women's eyes, how it can be confusing to decide for all of the bullshit that hits their eyes and give a bit of reprieve and say, I understand how it could be so hard to define yourself when you're hit with so much trash. But do understand this as men, we do not pity you at all. You got to figure it out on your own. And if you want to be with us, your goal is to figure out of the men that you want, what do they want? and to act accordingly and not to just be lemmings to these artists and these entertainers that mean you no good. She's the beauty who says she was betrayed by Taylor Swift's new boyfriend, Travis Kelsey. Like the saying goes, once a cheater, always a cheater. Maya Benberry dated the Kansas City Chiefs tight end in 2016. Certain qualities don't change in men. Um, I feel like Travis is a narcissist, so most narcissists don't change. And now she says she's not sure if Kelsey's romance with Taylor Swift is for real. The only reason that I question the genuineness of the relationship is because he's talking to the media a lot. Oh, my shut up. You know what's interesting about this is that, I, my opinion is, is that she's way more attractive than Taylor Swift, but it just goes to show you that it's not all about the visual. Generally, we're more visual than women, but God damn it, do we enjoy peace a lot more. And it's clear here, talking about him seven years after he broke up with you, you were a bitter, bitter woman. You don't even know what peace is, but these women go into these relationships just thinking that their beauty is going to suffice. Meanwhile, you don't even understand how men operate. How is it that I know that? Because the word narcissist came in your public interview. You women do know that it's a clinical diagnosis, right? And you're not a clinician. So calling a man a narcissist to describe your surface level understanding of how a man operates just demonstrates where your mindset actually is. It says she's been getting death threats from Swifties who think she's trying to destroy the budding romance. How do you feel about Taylor Swift? I don't know Taylor Swift, but I'm a fan of her music. You know, I don't feel any way about her dating Travis. It's cute. I mean, I had him first, so. The narrative is you're a bitter ex-girlfriend who's out for her 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I'm offended. Imagine calling someone a narcissist and then 10 seconds later saying, I had him first, nana nana poo poo. But yeah, I think that is accurate what the Swift fans are saying. I mean, why are you talking about him so long after y'all broke up? For what? For clout? You modern chicks today are just down so damn tremendously. So you utilize your beauty and your youth to get the high value man unable to keep the high value man. And now because the wall is staring down at you, now you have an issue with it. We wouldn't even know about you if it wasn't for his actual talent. You are being tied to an actually talented man. That's the only reason you're getting interviews. And for what? For more clout, for more views, for more clicks? Get a life, lady. We're these ambitious women that are like, no, I'm gonna go get it. I can still take care of my kids, but I'm gonna yeah. go make my money. You know what type of man you have to be to, for a woman like, like us to allow you to lead? Mm. Talk like, about that. I just kept, we would, I, I would bet my money we would succumb to it all for a man who could lead. You're right. Mm -hmm. I would You're bet right. money on the fact that I think if we were presented with the opportunity to be with a man who was just a man in every way, who mm -hmm. just, it's nothing more than we want than to be comfortable in our own femininity. Mm.
We mm. our, our masculinity is a, is a is a defense tactic. Yep. For whenever we feel threatened, I mean, or like, we I feel it. like, or we feel <laughs> overwhelmed, or we feel not protected. A woman has to deserve protection by the way she live her life or present herself. Talk to her. Mm -hmm. We feel not loved or not seen or not heard mm -hmm. is when we have this defense mechanism where we're like, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like yeah. and we get all tough and we, now nah, I got it. You don't got to do nothing. I got it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do this. That's cool. I'm going to get this money and I'm going to do this at a mm -hmm. third so you don't have the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if a man really came in to your world and made you comfortable, like, listen, you don't got to be. You don't got to do that. You, you ever had a man like, yo, fix your face. Calm mm -hmm. down. Oh, yeah. like, like, you know what I mean? Just kind of like. Get the French toast out of here. Yeah. That's it's something about, ooh, it's something about like, it that ooh, you think it's back something in your about it that yeah. you do. The most high, ooh, the most pit face. bull girl. What? Fix your face. Come on, you good. What's the what's the problem? What's I handle. Relax. Yeah. I got you, you. That's it. All right. I like that that little conversation. You be like, my man, my man, my man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. My man said you be at home like, in right. a robe. It's like, girl. You literally cannot make this ish up. When you see these news stories about these passport bros going abroad and people are asking why, show them this video right here. The more ambitious that they are, the more that they have accomplished, the much more of a real man that they expect for you to be. But see, their definition of a real man is defined by media. It's not based on a reality definition of what a real man is. They want ghost from power. They want corporate Tupac to be able to outmasculine their masculinity. She said, and I quote, I bet my money I would succumb to it all if I found a man that could lead. Are you serious, man? Throughout your entire life, you've never met a guy that is a leader. Or rather, your delusional picture of what these guys are do not exist, or the top echelon of man is unwilling to deal with your conditional femininity. You need to be humbled, downgrade your unrealistic expectations, or buy a dog, cat, die alone. Because no man deserves to suffer you. How many different men were you finessing on? Seeking. <laughs> well, I was actually robbing a lot of men on seeking. You were robbing? <laughs> well, I was doing both. It, I was, yeah, I was doing both. I, I mean, listen, I was a homeless, I was a homeless teen. I was living out of my car, out of a motel, on my friend's, you know, couches. Uh, but I was hustling. I was doing okay. If you want to meet up, give me $400. And then they give me $400 and then I'd go ghost. Um, which serves them right. They're trying to buy sex from an 18 year old. Your money's going to get taken. You should be in jail. So. What's well, still? Wait, so are you like justifying the fraud? <laughs> I'm just trying. I think it's completely justified. I think that you should be. Oh! Look, <laughs> look at the look on the woman's face when they realize that she is absolutely not trolling whatsoever. Because in her screwy head, it is somehow admissible for her to be participating in that industry, but it is inadmissible for a man to be participating in that very same industry. Felon if you buy sex. So you think procuring sex work should be criminalized, you know, in terms of... I believe in the but, Nordic model, but so it's criminalized for men to buy, but it's not criminalized for women to sell. This young woman is dangerous right here, all right, because she wears the feminist regalia but come to find out is that she doesn't believe in equality really <laughs> so men should be felons while women should just be able to participate also recognize her word choice as she describes herself as a homeless teen my opinion is is that she was a teenage recluse a delinquent someone that fought against the establishment including her parents she couldn't follow the rules. She couldn't stick to order. She couldn't stick to discipline. So she decided to emancipate herself, thus leading to her homelessness. But after realizing how hard life actually is and probably regretting the cushy life that she gave up, she turned to the oldest industry in the book to make some ducats. And now she has a chip on her shoulder because she screwed up her life and is now taking that out on men. Because in her mind, it's all men's fault. It's the patriarchy and we're so oppressed but she chooses to not take accountability nor responsibility of how she ended up in that situation i am mitch i'm here with mcqueen du Maurier. all right so i got one question for y'all y'all ready yeah. rate me one through ten rate you one through ten or rate your outfit through one through ten you want to do both that's okay if you want to do both this is your video okay all right wait me run rate through, through ten, 10. Yeah. i'm gonna give you a, a eight 7.5. Damn, okay. I didn't really see her face like that, but just off the strength of the bat wings hanging off of her 
eyelids alone, I give her a strong three. Strong three. All right. But just taking a look at the curvature. Actually, I don't know how much I can show of this on YouTube, but just looking at the musculature, the bone density of the young lady right here. I can tell that she doesn't work out. She's got a solid five more years left uh, before this entire capsule that contains her blood begins to turn to shit. I've seen it happen one too many goddamn times when they don't work out early. It's like they have these bodies when they're in high school, maybe a couple of years into college, and they think that they can eat the same amount as they get older. But no, mama, your metabolism starts to slow down. You got to eat less the older that you get. She has one baby, and there it goes. Seven and a half, yeah. Uh, that goes crazy. Why is it crazy? Because I'm not no seven. What or are you? A, a ten? How do you know that? Because I'm me. Because all these senses that told you a bunch of lies? No. Uh-oh. What? It's Damn. crazy. It's crazy. Can't tell you 7.5? No, I just know myself, so okay, I'm not a seven. What do you think you are? I'm a ten. You're a ten? That's a fucking lie. I'm going to be 100. <laughs> This gentleman right here, who I believe is a famous YouTuber, rated her an eight, which is above average, mama. I don't understand what is the negative thing about being above average. But I really do think that when women ask this question, they're not asking based off of how men view them. They're asking based off of what they think that you should think they should be. But of course, she is the entire table, so obviously she is a perfect 10. Listen, the next time that an average woman asks you to rate them on a scale of a one to 10, tell them the truth and tell them that they are at the highest point on the bell curve. In case you guys missed it, because I know it was very quick, she wrote, would you choose him in a room full of every guy you've wanted? What the hell is up with this unwinnable shit? So you telling me I'm gonna meet a nice, pretty young thing. I'm gonna treat her good. I'm gonna take her out to eat. I'm gonna walk on the side of the street that's closest to the street because apparently women from the South, that's like a thing, right? I'm gonna be chivalrous. I'm gonna open doors for y'all and everything like that. We're gonna be going off like two years into our relationship. You gonna meet my family. And then you gonna go off and think about this shit. Put me in a room comparing to every guy that you've ever wanted before. What are you supposed to do with this? This is how single women keep women that are in relationships unhappy with them. They bring them back to singleness eventually because they start inflicting a bunch of shit that'll ruin the relationship, even though it was all good to begin with. Was it really that small though? Was it really? Cause I mean, was he packing a Tic Tac or were you packing a hallway? It's all about uh -oh. body positivity until it's somebody else's body, isn't it? Big Hate truth. to break it to you, sweetheart. A man can't change the size of his peen, but you can change whether or not you got a hallway or a mouse hole. And yes, even a Tic Tac can. can do enough damage if you throw it fast enough. It's starting to look like you and a tampon got a lot of things in common, specifically the area in which they're stuck up. Maybe if you had some self-respect, you would have acknowledged the fact that you shouldn't have gotten with somebody if you didn't think that it was gonna actually do anything for you. Because I mean, in all reality, it's not his fault that when you walk down the street, it claps. It's not his oh, fault shit. we can hear a whistling every time the daggum wind blows. And just because Damn. you're working with the Suez Canal does not mean that he's working with a rowboat. So maybe next time before you decide to put down a man for the size of his peen, you'll remember that size is a relative thing. And it's not always the fact that a Tic Tac's getting thrown down the hallway. Sometimes it's just the fact that it's a hallway and not a mouse hole. Big Even true. a 747 tends to look small when it's going through the freaking Grand Canyon there, sweetheart. I mean, I'd tell you to go screw yourself, but you'd probably be just as disappointed as he was. Yeah, let me address this real quick as well, yo. So, so, it, like, okay, we talk about syndicated media and what has been pushed like this. Even on daytime talk shows, the, the concept of, it, does size really matter? It, it comes up so often because, obviously, it's dedicated towards women. So, it's created this space where they can just talk about these things and not even get, have empathy when they think about body, body positivity. Body positivity is damn near a, just a woman exclusive term nowadays. But what doesn't get a lot of credence is that it's not just up to the men. Shit, from my perspective, I've gone into some innards that weren't viscous. No matter what you did, it wasn't viscous. It was just of concrete origin. A lot of that has to do with their genetics. Also too, being with smaller, I've been with smaller women that got never ending viscous innards. I mean, you can't, you can't get to the end of it. And I've had even taller women that have little, it's like you punching, you punching the end of the cervix at the, at the end of every stroke. You know what I'm saying? And it comes from a genetic perspective. So just 
as dudes have genetic predispositions from a genitalia perspective that are valuable or would adversely affect them in a sexual relationship or dynamic women got the same exact goddamn shit maybe that's what i should start next okay instead of talking about does size matter does the viscous of the innards matter does the depth of the innards matter have a whole series about that shit okay but then what will come next oh he's he's misogynistic when y'all have these conversations about us is that misandrous Tighten up. So, what's so, out for so, dirt? A deal. Into y'all. Uh, uh, Cut the new uh, beats like we in charge. charge no cap with the rappers like steel bars. I'm packing balls. and rapping like here we are. Here we are. Mediocre tutorial reviews. Like, comment, share my views. Come up and I paid my dues. Big step in my black waist shoes. MTR. He break it down. Yeah, it's MTR. Check out the sound when it's MTR. No one put it down like it's MTR. Uh.